This video looks at how you might generate a state space model from a generic ODE. So previous videos introduced the concept of state space models and showed how you might get these if you began from first principles modeling. But in some cases you might be supplied with just an ODE, perhaps a high order ODE, and nevertheless it's convenient to express this as an equivalent state space model. This video then introduces a standard process for doing this. Now the first step in forming a state space model was to define the states. The model is made up of the equations which define the derivatives of your states. And you remember there needs to be enough independent states to capture the entire system dynamics. In general, the number of states required will match the system order. So the number of dynamic modes in the system tells you how many states you need. Now you can have more states but that's beyond the remit of this series. With an ODE the order is already known because an nth ODE is clearly nth order and so therefore it remains solely to identify which n states are most appropriate. We'll start using a simple example of a second order ODE. Now you will remember from the previous videos is the main technique is to identify the derivatives of the states and what we're going to do is make sure that every derivative in our ODE is written as a first order derivative because the technique is to express everything in terms of first order derivatives. Once you've got these the definition of the states will be automatic. So here's an example. You can see it's a second order ODE. Clearly dx dt is already a first order derivative and so my challenge is to say how can I express this second order derivative d2x dt squared as a first order derivative? Well that's going to be fairly straightforward. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that the second order derivative d2x dt squared is actually the derivative of dx dt. So if I define dx dt as a state x1, then d2x dt squared will be the derivative of x1. So here we go. If I write x1 equals dx dt, then clearly dx1 dt is d2x dt squared. So now all the terms in my equations can be written as first order derivatives. So we'll rewrite those two steps there and you'll see the difference here is instead of writing d2x dt squared, what I've done is I've written dx1 dt. So now I've got two equations which have first order derivatives rather than one equation which has a second order and a first order derivative. So you'll see the original equation, I've replaced the d2x dt squared by dx1 dt and I've replaced dx dt by x1 and I've got a new equation over here which gives me the definition of my new state x1. Now what do we do? To form a state space model we stack the derivatives into a vector. So you'll see here I've got dx1 dt stacked over dx dt and I use my two equations to define these. So you'll see dx1 dt is given by minus b over a times x1 minus c over a times x plus k over a times u. So that's our original equation and then my new equation this one here is the second row dx dt equals x1. So now I've got my second order ODE into my classic state space form which is z dot equals az plus bu, where z is defined <coughs> as the vector x1, x, a is the matrix given here, and b is the matrix given here. Now how would we extend this to a generic nth order ODE? And we're going to use the same technique. We're going to treat every derivative in the ODE as if it were a first order derivative. So we've got to define new states to make all the higher order derivatives look like first order derivatives and if you do that the definition of the states becomes automatic. 
Here's an example then of an nth order derivative. You'll see I've got a n d to the n x dt to the n, a n minus 1, d n to the minus 1 x dt to the n minus 1, and so on. And what I need to do is replace these high order derivatives. So the first one, dx dt, I don't need to do anything. That's already a first order derivative. The second one is d2x dt squared. So what I'm going to do is, same as in the previous example, I'm going to say that this is the derivative of dx dt. So if I define dx dt as x1, then d2x dt squared is going to become dx1 dt. Now I can use the same process all the way along, and I've gone right to the end here, and we said let's look at this example here, where I've got d to the n x dt to the n, that is the derivative of d to the n minus 1, x dt to the n minus 1. So if I define that as x n minus 1, then this derivative here is going to be dx n minus 1 dt. So let's summarize what we've done. We've defined x n minus 1 as being the nth minus 1 derivative of x. We've defined x1 as being the derivative of x. And if you follow the same analogy along, you'll see that x2 is given as dx1 dt, or d2x dt squared, and so on. So now all I need to do is take my original ODE and substitute in all of these new definitions. So you'll see where I've got, for example, d2x dt squared, I can substitute in from here, and you'll see that's going to give x2. Where I've got here dn minus 1x dt to the n minus 1, I can substitute in from here, which gives me xn minus 1, and so on. So this is what my equation becomes. I get ku times an dxn minus 1 dt plus an minus 1 xn minus 1, and so on, to a2x2 a1x1 a naught x. So you'll see my original high order differential equation is now first order in n states. So instead of having an nth order in one state, I've got a first order in n states. And we've got equations defining first order derivatives for each of these n states. You can see x1 is dx dt, x2 is dx1 dt, and so on. So the final step is to stack all of these into a vector of first order derivatives. So here I've rewritten the equations, xn minus 1 equals dxn minus 2 dt, x2 equals dx1 dt, x1 is dx dt, and so on and my original ODE with the state substituted in. So I now just stack all of these first order derivatives. So you'll see I've got d dt of x minus 1, d dt of x minus 2, all the way down to d dt of x. The top row here comes from my original equation. So you'll see I've got a n minus 1 over a n, a n minus 2 over a n, and so on. And that will give comes from this original equation here. And then all the other rows come from the definitions of these new states. So d dt of x n minus 2, that's here, is going to be 1 times x n minus 1. dx dt is going to be x1 which is going to be in here somewhere, if you define it. So you'll notice, instead of having a single ODE with of nth order, I've now got a state space model, which has got n states, but all the derivatives are now first order. Now what about the ordering of the state vector? You can choose to stack the vectors in whichever order is most convenient. And the following slides show two alternative state space models, and this is the key thing, alternative models for the same system. So both are correct. And the key thing to notice there is state space models are not unique. First example then. So this is like the example we've just done with the nth order, except now I've made it fourth order. So I won't dwell on those equations. We'll just write down the result. 
So you'll notice I had a fourth, fourth order ODE, and from this I've got four states, x1, 2, x3. My A matrix is 4 by 4. My Z has got four states. My B is 4 by 1, and so on. And if you look at this A matrix, what do you notice? The key coefficients are in the top row, and then I've got these ones in the sort of lower diagonal. So this is a valid representation of that ODE. Now, I've got exactly the same equations here, so nothing's changed there. But what I'm going to do is order the vectors in a different way. So if you look at what I've done here, when I've defined my state vector, I've taken x to be the first, x1 to be the second, x2 to be the third, x4 to be the fourth. And you'll see that's the opposite order to the way I did it on the previous page. And as a consequence, these coefficients here are now in the bottom row. And they're also in the opposite order to the way they were before. So what do you notice? The A matrix is totally different. The B matrix is different because before the K over A4 was in the top row, now it's in the bottom row. And the Z is defined as back to front. So what's the summary? We've illustrated a state space model derivation for a generic nth order ODE. And we've noted that an easy selection of states, it's not the only selection, but it's an easy selection, is one whereby each derivative in the ODE is treated as an equivalent first order derivative of a state which you define for your convenience. Now the compact form has vectors of states and inputs and matrices of coefficients. And here's a key point. A different ordering of the states will lead to different A, B matrices. So A and B are not unique. X is not unique. You can put X whatever order you like, and that will change A and B. But the other thing we should note here is that the choice of X that we made was to some extent arbitrary. And there exist other choices of states which will also lead to different results for A and B. So the key thing to note is, if I write it here, a state space model is not unique. So a number of different state space models can be used to represent the same system.